combining all of the things that we've discussed so far, including force, momentum, change in momentum, impulse, and um, conservation of momentum, we can now start to talk about collisions. There's two types of collisions, and the first one, which is called elastic collisions, the total kinetic energy of the system is, is conserved in addition to the momentum. So this isn't the total energy, this is actually the total kinetic energy. This is supposed to be like when billiard balls hit um, each other on a pool table. Most uh, collisions are actually not elastic. So if you think about a car crash, um, you actually will end up losing energy. That energy can go out in friction, it can go out in work, it can go out in sound or thermal energy. And so when you lose some kinetic energy to some other type of energy or even potential energy, then that's an inelastic collision. Most realistic collisions are inelastic collisions. Um, but both elastic and inelastic collisions can conserve momentum as long as there's no net external force acting on those objects. Um, another type of inelastic collision is a perfectly inelastic collision. In this case, two objects um, uh, approach each other and collide, and then they go, they actually move off with the same final velocity, basically because they stick together. So, for instance, if you have a ball that's made out of putty and you ram it into another ball, then they'll actually, the putty ball will stick to the initial ball. And um, this type of collision is actually um, easy to calculate because they have the same final velocity and the two masses combine at the end. So let's do an example of a, of a perfectly inelastic collision. And we'll do a 2D example. Um, so we have two masses. They both have mass m and they're moving with initial speed of v towards the same location in the origin, and they're going to collide at that origin. Um, the first question is, what's the momentum of the center of mass of the system before the collision? So we have these two masses, the green one and the purple one. The purple one's moving at an angle 45 degrees. The green one is just moving along the x-axis. Um, so we can start, we have to do this in two dimensions. So we can do each dimension separately, because what starts in x stays in x, and what starts in y stays in y. So that's how um, easy it is to do vector addition, just break everything down into their components. It's easy to do the green one, it only has an x component. We're going to call the um, moving to the right the positive x direction and moving up the positive y direction. And so we can see that the momentum of the green particle, which we call particle 1, is positive mv. The second particle is a little bit more complicated, but we can break it down into component form. We should realize, though, that this arrow is actually pointing um, down into the third quadrant of this um, xy plot, and that means its angle isn't 45 degrees. The angle is actually 225 degrees. And so that um, putting that into the cosine to find the x direction, we get a negative 1 over the square root of 2. That's multiplied by mv, so we get that the momentum in the x direction for the purple mass is minus mv over the square root of 2. And that's not exactly the same as um, in the green. And so if we add these two together, um, you can see it's slightly smaller for the purple one in the x direction. So we would expect that in the x direction, it actually continues to move to the right in the positive direction. For the y direction, um, the green mass is easy. It's not moving in the y direction, so its initial momentum is zero. Um, for the purple mass, uh, we break, it, break the velocity down into component form again. We get the velocity in the y component is um, also negative. It's equal to negative 1 over the square root of 2, just like in the x direction. And so we can see that this is the, um, uh, in the y direction, the momentum is moving as the velocity is moving negative for the whole system. And so again, the center of mass, it's moving mostly to the right. It's also moving down. And so it's actually moving into the fourth quadrant, um, the lower right quadrant. And so that's the way that the center of mass will be moving of this whole system. And so um, we can write that out in component form. We can see that the momentum is um, uh, mv times 1 minus 1 over the square root of 2. Again, that's a positive number moving to the right. And um, we, the um, y direction is minus mv over the square root of 2, which is in the negative direction, so it's moving down. So it's moving down into the right. This is the center of mass. Because um, the center of mass is moving uh, in that direction and um, we're not having any external forces, we know that the momentum is conserved um, for the collision. And the second question is, um, assuming that the, the green and the purple masses stick together, so it's a perfectly inelastic collision, what direction will the velocity be? 
So it's not asking us what the magnitude of the velocity is, it's actually asking what direction it's pointing in. So we should report that with an angle. And so um, we know that the total momentum is conserved since we've already calculated the momentum of the center of mass. That has to be the same before and after. And so we can just use this in order to find the momentum after. We can do the x-direction first and we know that the total momentum will be in the x-direction will um, after the two masses collide will be 2mvx, whatever vx is. And we have to calculate what that vx is. Um, same thing will be true in the y direction, which we'll do in a second. So we know that the momentum in the x direction initial has to equal the final momentum in the x direction for there to be conservation in the x direction. And so that tells us that mv times 1 minus 1 over the square root of 2 has to equal 2 mvx, vx, and that's the vx final. Um, and we can divide this by um, 2m on both sides. The m's will cancel and um, the two will come in to make um, the, the velocity in the x direction equal to the initial velocity or speed of both of them times one half minus one over two times the square root of two in the denominator. So this is not a very, very informative um, thing, but you can actually calculate that number if you want to. I'm gonna leave it in this form because it's gonna be easier later on to do some canceling but you can calculate that and you'll see that um, it's moving still in the positive um, x direction as the center of mass obviously must still be because it's conserved. Okay, we can look in the y direction now and again the final momentum in the y direction is 2mvy. Vy is going to be um, what we're looking for and um, we know that the initial and the final momentums in the y direction are conserved so that means that 2mvy is equal to this minus mv over the square root of 2. We do the same thing, divide by 2m, cancel the m's, and um, we get that vy is equal to minus v over 2 square root of 2. And again, this is moving in the negative y direction, so center of mass is still moving in that direction. And we can write this um, v final as, we can pull the v out from both terms, um, but the first term will have a 1 half minus 1 over the square root of 2 times 2, and the second one will just be 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 in the denominator. Now the question is what's the direction of this velocity, and I can kind of say it's moving down and to the right, but really um, we should find the angle. So how do we find that angle? We know that the tangent of that theta is vy over vx, so we can just plug this vy, which is the second term of the v sub f, and we can do the um, vx as the first term. They both have v multiplied by them. Those v's will cancel. Um, so that gives us that the tangent, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom times 2 square root of 2 to get rid of it. And so in the top we'll just end up with a minus 1. On the bottom, um, that second term will just end up with a minus 1. The first term will end up with a square root of 2 because we're multiplying it. Um, that top and bottom times 2 square root of 2. And if we calculate this out, we can see that the tangent of theta is now equal to this weird number, it doesn't really matter, minus 2.414. If we plug that into our, our calculator and we do the inverse tangent or arctan, then we can get um, this angle, which is 67.5 degrees, and it's a negative theta, so um, to pointing down, but we have to remember that tangent also could have another answer because it actually has more than one answer for the same angle, and so it could also be 112.5 degrees. If you want to double check that, you can. If you put in 112.5 degrees and hit tangent, you'll see that you also get minus 2.414. So um, we have to decide which of these is right, and the way we do this is again thinking about which of these, which quadrant these angles are in. So this 112.5 will actually be in the upper um, left quadrant, and this minus 67.5 will be in the lower right. And so that means that this is the angle that we want to use. This angle is also equal to 360 minus 67.5. And again, that's actually equivalent to 112.5 plus um, 180. And so um, that those angles are the same. The, those, so minus 67.5 is equal to the same angle as 112.5 plus 180.